Let's take this stoichiometry lesson one step further. So we looked at how to convert from moles to moles in another video, moles of one substance to moles of another. Well, what if you have a problem um, when you start with something other than moles, like 16 grams of lithium to start with? How do I convert that into another substance? So how do we approach this problem if we're given mass instead of moles? Now remember, these coefficients in front represent mole ratios only. They don't represent mass ratios. So in order to use these coefficients, I have to be in the unit of moles. So we have to be in moles to use the coefficients. So when in doubt, mole it out. If you're given mass or grams to start with, which is a unit of mass, you're going to have to mole that out. Turn those grams into moles first with one conversion factor, and then you can use the coefficients in another conversion factor to convert from moles of one substance to moles of another. Okay, so we'll have to convert any mass amounts to moles before using the coefficients. If you remember, how do you convert mass to moles? That's just using the molar mass. Okay, these conversions can sometimes take up to three steps. You might have to, if you are given mass of one substance, you might have to mole that out. Then you can turn it to moles of another substance using the coefficients. And then maybe you have to turn it back into mass using the molar mass of that second substance. So again, when in doubt, mole it out. And be very specific about your unit. What do you have, 50 grams? Grams of what, H2O? Or do you have 50 moles? Moles of what, CO2? So be very specific about your units. Show all your work with dimensional analysis. Okay, so let's look at an example. How many moles of Li3N are produced when 16 grams of solid lithium react? So let's write what we start with in the problem statement. We start with 16, 16 what? Grams, grams of what? 16 grams of lithium. So I want to turn it into a different substance. I want to turn it into Li3N. So notice I have this, chem this chemical equation or chemical reaction that relates Li to Li3N in a 6 to 2 ratio. But I can only use those coefficients if I'm in moles. Am I in moles to start with? No, I'm in mass or grams to start with. When in doubt, mole it out. So I've got to convert this into moles of lithium before I can touch those coefficients. Do not touch those coefficients unless you're in moles because those represent mole ratios. So I'm going to have to change grams of lithium into moles of lithium. I want a conversion factor that has grams of lithium on the bottom and moles of lithium on top. Notice I'm being very specific about my unit because I'm going to change lithium eventually into a different compound. How do I relate grams to moles? I use the molar mass. If you look up lithium on your periodic table, it has a molar mass of 7 grams per mole. 7 is always going to go next to the G in your conversion factor, and 1 is going to go next to the mole because 1 mole of lithium weighs 7 grams. This will let me cancel out grams of lithium, and now I'm in moles of lithium. Now I can use those coefficients to convert moles of lithium into moles of Li3N. So I want, um, so this is my first step is moling it out. So I want moles of lithium on the bottom, so moles cancel of lithium, and I want moles of Li3N on top, so that that's what I'm left behind with. Now I'm in moles of Li3N. Is that what I want? How many moles of Li3N? Yes, so I can stop there. And I'm going to multiply everything on the top and divide by anything on the bottom, okay? And I'm going to get 0.76 moles of lithium nitrate. nitrate. Okay, so this step I'm moling out the Li because I need to be in moles to use this conversion factor that comes from my coefficients. That's the part we call stoichiometry. Again, notice I'm putting the formula after my unit to be very specific because I am changing units here. Take a moment and try this example and then check your work with the video. So I'm going to start with one gram and I'm going to put the formula after it, 1 gram of C6H12O6, which is glucose. So I want to change it into grams of water. I want to change glucose into a different substance. I'm going to end up using these coefficients to do that because I have this chemical reaction that relates glucose, what I'm starting with, to water, what I want. The only catch is I have to be in moles to use these coefficients. And if you notice, I'm not in moles to start with. So I've got to change grams of glucose into moles of glucose first. How can I do that? I can use the molar mass of glucose, C6H12O6. So somewhere on the side, you can calculate the molar mass. There's six carbons that weigh 12. There's uh, there's 12 hydrogens that weigh 1, there's 6 oxygens that weigh 16. Add it up, you get that it has a molar mass of 180. So 1 mole 
of glucose weighs 180 um, grams, and that's how I get my conversion factor. We've done this before. Now, just a note here, no matter what the coefficient is of glucose, whether there's a 1 here, or a 2 here, or a 3 here, or a 5,006 here, this is going to be my conversion factor to change from grams of glucose to moles of glucose, because I'm just looking at the subscripts to get the mass of this formula. So don't pay attention to any coefficient in front until you get to the stoichiometry step where you're relating glucose to water which is what I'm going to do now. Okay, so now I'm in moles of glucose. So I want moles of glucose on the bottom. I want moles of H2O on top because that's what I'm converting into. I have to be in moles to use these coefficients, so I can't go right into grams of H2O. I can go into moles, though. And these numbers are coming from my coefficients, one next to the glucose and a six next to the H2O. Now moles of glucose have canceled out, and I'm left with moles of H2O. But go back to your problem statement. I don't want moles of water. I want grams of water. So I'm going to have to take this one step further and now change the moles of H2O into grams of H2O using the molar mass of water. So somewhere on the side do the molar mass of water. There's two H's that each weigh one. There's one O that weighs 16. It has a molar mass of 18 grams per mole. So I can put moles on the bottom so they cancel, grams on top so it's left. The 18 always goes next to the grams. Now notice I have a coefficient of 6 in front of H2O. And that's why I have this 6 here. Do not multiply the 18 by 6 here again. Okay, you're taking care of the fact that it has a coefficient here. When I'm doing the molar mass, just go by the formula. No matter what the coefficient is here, 6, 7, 8, 52, doesn't matter. There's two H's, there's one O, H2O, the mass of just the formula H2O, is 18 grams and one mole. So that's what I was saying before. Only use the coefficients in this one stoichiometry step when you're changing from moles of one substance to moles of another. When you're doing the step where you're moling it out or turning it back into grams, only use the mass of the formula looking at the subscripts only. Okay, So I'm multiplying everything on top, dividing by the things on the bottom, and I get 0.6 grams of H2O. So notice you might need three steps, and that's okay. You might need to mole it out, then do stoic, and then turn it back into the mass. Just be aware of what formula you're using. Notice I have one molar mass to start with because I'm starting with glucose, and I have a different molar mass to end with because now I'm in a different substance. I'm in H2O. Okay. So as I said before, use only use the coefficients when converting between moles of one substance and moles of a different substance. This conversion factor here labeled stoic. Do not use the coefficients when calculating molar mass or converting between mass and moles of the same substance in these conversion factors. I'm only looking at the formula and the subscripts. I don't even need to look at a chemical reaction to do this. Okay. Take a moment, try this example, and then check your work. So I'm going to start with 10.5 grams of C5H12. Be very specific about your units. Um, to touch these coefficients, I need to be in moles. I'm not in moles to start with. I'm in grams. So my first step, when in doubt, mole it out. Okay, I need the molar mass. It's somewhere on the side. You can calculate it. It's 72 grams for every one mole of C5H12. I want grams on the bottom to cancel. I want moles on top, so I'm left with that. And now my unit is moles of C5H12. I don't want C5H12. I want carbon dioxide, so I can change from moles of C5H12 to moles of CO2 using these coefficients because they represent mole ratios and mole ratios only, not mass ratios. So I can put moles of C5H12 on the bottom so they cancel. I could put moles of CO2 on top and use this 1 to 5 mole ratio as my, um, as my mole ratio here. This is the step that we call stoichiometry. Now I'm in moles of CO2, but notice the problem asks for grams of CO2, not moles. So I need one more step where I change my moles of CO2, I want that on the bottom so it cancels, into grams of CO2 using the molar mass of CO2. If I just look at the formula of CO2, there's one C, there's two O's, that weighs 44 grams. Doesn't matter that it has a coefficient of 5. Notice I did not use that at all in this step, and that's one of the common mistakes I see. I've used this 1 to 5 ratio here, so don't use it again later. Okay, And I multiply everything on top, divide by everything on the bottom, and I get 32.1 grams of CO2. Take a moment, try this example, and then check your work. 
I'm starting with 1.5 grams of sodium. Be very specific about your unit, 1.5 grams of sodium. I want to change it into a different substance, into aluminum, and that's why I have this chemical reaction that relates sodium to aluminum. But this chemical reaction is a mole ratio. I have to be in moles to use it. I'm not in moles. When in doubt, mole it out. So we've got to change grams of sodium into moles of sodium first. I do that with the molar mass. I want grams of sodium on bottom so they cancel. I want moles of sodium on top. And if I look up sodium, it has an atomic mass of 23. So one mole of sodium weighs 23 grams. I'm now in moles of Na because grams have canceled. And I can now use the coefficients to relate moles of Na to moles of A out Here's with this 3 to 1 ratio. So I put moles of Na on the bottom so they cancel. I put moles of Al on top so I'm left behind with that. Okay? Now my unit is moles of Al. Have I answered the question? No, I want grams of Al. So I'm going to need one more conversion factor where I change moles of Al into grams of Al. And I do that using the molar mass. I want moles on the bottom so they cancel. I want grams on top so they're left behind. And aluminum has an atomic mass of about 27. So 27 goes next to the G. And one mole of Al weighs 27 grams. Okay. And if I do this all out, multiply by everything on top, divide by the things on the bottom, I get 0.59 grams of Al. Notice that even though sodium has this coefficient of 3, that did not affect the molar mass. Sodium Na, the formula Na, has a mass of 23 grams for every one mole. Okay, I did use that 3 in the step of stoichiometry, so make sure you're only using this 3 to 1 ratio once in your conversion.